Well, it's mailbag again, and I've got another big box. Now, I think this is from Banggood. We'll find out. As you can see, we've got a whole bunch of other smaller stuff too. We'll do the small stuff first, then we'll get into the big box. It is a USB-C, or USB to USB-C cable. It's got this um, woven fabric outer on it, which I quite like these woven fabrics. They quite wear resistant and they don't peel away like you do with the plastic ones, stuff like that, after you know, a number of years. I bought a few USB-C devices because I didn't have anything until recently, which is USB-C. And I realized I need some cables and things like that, and I need to sort of get a few bits and pieces around. So when I do need to do USB stuff, I've actually got the bits I need. Do links to this down below. Quovy, is it? Charge your life. Yeah, okay. I've ripped more than anything else. <laughs> Alright, is that it? That's one little bag. Okay, All right, what's in here? 2.2 microfarad 35 volt tantalum capacitors. I've spent about $200 on tantalum capacitors recently. Now I picked up that Datron 4700 multi purpose calibrator. They have a history of bad tantalum capacitors because they're not really rated high enough. The voltage is like 25 volt caps on 15 volt rails and it should be at least double the rating, sometimes three times the rating if possible. And as they get aged, they actually deteriorate slightly as well. Generally, the margins are big enough that it's not a problem. But the, the Datron 4700s are known for having issues with tantalum capacitors blowing up. So before I even worked on the thing, I've decided to stock up in tantalum capacitors, things it might use. Now, I know someone did actually post a list of capacitors it does use, and I've purchased the ones on that list, and I've purchased a few other little random ones as well, just in case it needed them, because there's no harm in having a few extra stock ones. And we have some more tantalum capacitors. So these are... 4.7 microfarad 35 volt. These ones here are 33 microfarad 35 volt. The original tantalums in the 4700 are 25 volt caps on 15 volt rail, as I said, so I'm upgrading to 35 volt and replacing them. I think there's quite a few tents in there, so that's going to be interesting. Obviously, though, getting tantalum capacitors is a particularly exciting mail bag. Obviously, when I do the repair video, then it'll be a different story. So, you see me using these capacitors to do the repair work. Watch out for that video coming out in the I don't know, not too distant future, I suppose. It's probably going to be a big series. I think that's all it's in it. More tantalum capacitors. So the other ones are from Element 14. These ones are from RS, I think. Was it the other way around? I can't remember. It might be from Element 14, actually. Some are cheaper than others on the two sites. I compared the two sites, Element 14 and RS components. Element 14 was generally cheaper, but not always. I think there was one part which RS was cheaper for. One microfarad, 35 volt. Yeah, these are multi-comp pro ones, which are like... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how good these are, but these are like a generic brand. So the other ones are AVX, I think it was, AVX. Please be something other than tantalum capacitors. That's the same, when I do a repair video, it'll be a big video series of me repairing the Datron, the 4700 calibrator. I'm sure that's going to be a big series. The last calibrator I repaired was the Fluke 5500A, the AC calibrator. That was a 19 part video series. That's quite brilliant. I really enjoyed that video series. That was a lot of work. So yeah, watch out for that for coming up. These are zips. Yeah, I think it's two sizes. I don't remember. Yes, two sizes of zip trousers or jackets or something like that, and the zip breaks. Usually, you have to replace the whole zip. But I stumbled across these things on AliExpress. I think it was an advert which popped up when I was looking at something else. Imagine that. These are there. I thought, oh, those look interesting. So, you can actually just clip these on to the zip when your existing one breaks. And, you know, obviously around the teeth, you have to, you know, get the line of teeth up and put this on. And this will replace your broken zip. I thought that could be really handy, so I thought I'd get a couple different sizes. I know there have been times when I've had like trousers which are broken and a zip has gone on them and all it needed was one of these because that part was what broke. In that situation it would have been quite nice to just have one of these. So yeah, good links for these down below. I don't know how good they are as far as reliability and strength and that sort of stuff. They could be absolute rubbish, I don't know, but if the, your zip's already broken, you've got nothing to lose, have you? 68 ohms, 5% 1 watt axial carbon capacitors. So, let's get them out. I'm going to put them in my drawers anyway. So you would have seen me doing repairs on these electrofusion welders and what I've found is that the resistor, which is part of the sensing circuitry for the actual fitting which is attached to it before it welds, has been blowing and I'm not sure why it's been happening and I was getting a bit low on resistors so I thought I'd get some more. These are actually 1 watt resistors, so the ones I've been replacing with have been quarter watt which should have been in theory absolutely fine but they're getting blown. Get some beefier ones, you know, I probably should have really gone to half a watt but 1 watt was just as cheap, so I got some ones because I may never use them again. Who knows? Um, there might be a, a, a bit of a bad stint with them. 
I'd never have to replace that particular resistor ever again. But one watt resistors, you know, sort of thing that's quite handy to have as well sometimes. You know, I'm like for having parts, you know, just in case I need them one day in 20 years or something. Oh. This one's from RS. Well, there's lots of bits in here. So this is more tantalum capacitors. Let me check the invoice to see what else is in here. Okay, so I've got 20 and 50. So I've got 20 22 microfarad 35 volt caps. I've also got 50 10 microfarad caps. So I've got a nice big stock of these now. So I'm going to expect to be doing a lot of recapping on the Dactron. So these are prone to failure, as I said. Normally I don't replace tantalum capacitors. I just leave them alone. Unless I've got a reason to suspect it's bad. Or if the power supply is particularly um, faulty that supplies that circuit the tantalum capacitors in. Because I don't like a high ripple voltage. You know, I don't like being stressed. As long as they're rated sufficiently, then it won't be a problem generally. Generally, I'll just leave them alone. I, unless I see discoloration, then I'll change it, that sort of thing, or if I suspect it's been stressed. I haven't had a bad success rate with that. I've never had anything fail after the fact when I've just left them and they've been okay. I've never had that go wrong. But, say, the Stash on 4700s, different story. The ratings have been a bit marginal on them, so. We've still got a big box to come up yet, so don't forget, so stick around for that. Also, if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon if you want to receive notifications. And if you like mailbag videos, maybe give me a thumbs up as well. Oh, some more resistors. What are these ones? 16 ohm, 1% axial metal film, 500. So these are half watt resistors. So these ones are 1% ones as well. So obviously I'll, I'll purchase some from both sites, Final and RS. But that's okay, so now I've got a selection of them. I'll be more inclined to put these ones in. This would probably be okay if it ever happens again. We also have some Triac Otto couplers. These are MOC3020X. So these are the parts I used in the electrofusion units. I did show that at the time when I was doing those repairs. These little auto colors have got a little triac built into them as well. And these drive these triacs. So I've got a stock of these as well now. I think they could have used a much smaller bag if I just cut this tube down in half. What do we have here? BTA 26800 BWRG. So these are also for electrofusion units. Again, I may never need them, but I wanted to get some stock. Because if these few these welders do fail again, I want to have the parts here on hand so I can fix the things straight away. The last time I had those welders, I took a lot of diagnosis time and I had them for a long time. Too long. Way too long. I like to try and turn things around in like a day or two if I can. I do things for weeks. Off and on. I sit them back a couple of times as well. Because they were urgent, ironically. So these are now parts on hand. So if those same parts fail again in the future, I've got spares. Now when I did the previous repair, I only bought what I needed. I only bought two. Because I wasn't sure that's what was wrong. I used them both when I did the repairs because I repaired the few units and it actually worked. So, yes. So, hopefully, it never happens ever again now. And I'll never use these. Hmm. Right, let's find out what's in this thing. It is. It's the GTEC A20M. This is a dual filament 3D printer. So like I said, this is from Banggood, so this is at no charge to me, you know, at no cost for purpose of review. So thank you much, Banggood, for sending this to me. I would show the little card, but it's over there somewhere. So all the links for this thing down below, and also be doing a proper review video on this thing too. So make sure you check those out when I actually go to do them. Let's pop the top off, and I'll see what we've got inside first. Right, so you can see I've got to assemble this thing. So I've got the frame mostly built, but looks of it. It's like it's basically there. So we've got the vertical parts onto the horizontal base, is what it looks like. And dual extruders here, which have got this weird gear assembly on them. How good those are, I don't know. There's been mixed feelings about these. Some people say they fail. Just you then change the extruder to be a direct drive and just change these steps, stuff like that. So I think it's the early ones that failed. Maybe they're good now. I guess we'll find out. So you can actually put two filaments on it once and your dual colours. That's a mouse pad. The dual colours and you can also mix the colours as well. So it's got a single nozzle. So having one nozzle means alignments are perfect because it's always in the same place. All it does is changes the extruders it's using. And so you can actually mix two colours together and get different colours. You make your own, as long as they're compatible materials, of course. I got this for that project I was doing with the Dactron display. I was manually 3D printing in clear and then changing filament and going to black. This will do that automatically. Watch out for that review video. It'll be coming up, yeah, soonish. <laughs> so if you see this, go and check out my reviews because it might have already be out. So I hope you found it interesting. Now that stuff, lots of capacitors, too many capacitors. These capacitors are going in this unit here. So this is the Datron. Like I said, I'll be doing repair on this and I expect it to be quite involved. I expect it to take a lot of time. But before I do that, so make sure you need to watch these other videos. 
Down here, I've got another thing I need to fix in my queue. It's a Vecol Dana 2101. This is a uh, micro frequency counter. A bit dusty because it's been sitting there for a little while. But uh, this is how I need to fix as well. I've did feature this on my uh, live stream. But this needs some repairs done to it, so this will be done first. This is in the queue. This is happening first. I've also got over here behind me, just there, is a Datron 1062, another multimeter which I need to fix. I thought I'd just do some endings of the mailbags and just give a different format and give like a summary sitting on a chair in front of the camera so you get to see what it looked like. I think that's a good thing. I've had so much stuff to do, it's incredible. I'm slowly catching up. We had a lockdown here this week. I was actually stuck at home for three days, I couldn't get to work. And that is actually quite good because I've got a few projects done which is brilliant. I did some work on my Laura to Wi-Fi gateway, the little project I did recently. I think I did a little short on it. I've been stories short, I can't remember. Little vertical video showing the actual grey box with the controller and stuff in it. I actually added some code to that and made a buffer. So when it receives Laura data, it adds it to a buffer and will sit there until the server responds to it and then clears it off. The server controls it basically. It stop and loss of data if the server's not responding. It works well. Check out my other playlist at the end. I've got loads of playlists. Just go watch something else. I've got loads of 800 videos I've done so far. There has to be something else there you like, which you haven't seen yet. Lots of repairs. My very early videos, the production quality is nowhere near as good as I do now. This obviously still is an improvement too, but my original videos were handheld, shaky cam sort of stuff. But some of the actual repair diagnostics I was doing in them was really interesting and, and um, quite good, I think. There's, I think one of my favourite ones is the Fluke 6060B, I think it is. It's an iSignal generator. That was quite an involved repair, that was quite good, um, but not the same production standard as this. Maybe go and check out my whole stuff. It's, I think it's only got like 60 views on it or something like that, or 100 views. It's really low view count because back then I was really small. It's on my early videos. So go and check out my really early stuff if you want to see something else, which got me started, you know, doing the uh, electronic YouTubing stuff. Yeah, I'm forgetting something, I'm sure. Also, I'm on Twitter, right? You may not be aware of this. I'm actually on Twitter, so if you look for the Deaf Pom on Twitter, you'll see me on there too. So if you want to follow what I'm doing on Twitter, go and check that out. Also, I'm on Odyssey, uh, Library, BitChute, a few other platforms as well, in case it ever matters. Go and check out the Odyssey channel and go and subscribe to me on there as well. Might be something you care about, maybe. Ad free. I'll catch you next time. Subscribe, click the bell icon, the thumbs up if you like the video. The original ones are in the, in the 4700. Yeah. The original tan the original tantalums in the 4700 are 25 volt. So you will see me doing repairs on these ultrasonic well, ultrasonic. So you will see me doing repairs on these electrofusion welders. Normally I don't replace tantalum tan tan God. Normally I don't replace tantalum capacitors. 